algorithm facts. Uh, good morning to those two lot lizards. Uh, good morning to uh, Dookie Stan. Uh, I already said algorithm facts. You know, the rest of them, they all fall in that category. Uh, no, good morning to the the newfound uh, Magnum YouTube PIs, the hood nigga PIs. Um, yeah, yeah, street cold hood nigga Magnum YouTube PIs. Good morning to you guys. Uh, good morning to any of my my beautiful baby mothers. Uh, Good morning to your attorneys. Uh, <laughs> uh, just, just good morning all around the board. You know, I just wanted to say good morning to you guys. You know, got to saw my homie last night. I know the haters punching the hell. <laughs> well, yeah, he was on the show with Al Allen Iverson last night, y'all. the haters punching the hell. Oh, yeah. my God. He was on there with Allen Iverson. I saw a guy. I saw a guy. I don't even want to say the guy name, but I saw a guy. He uses the poster, you know, because we got the new Black City coming November the 27th, right here in Atlanta. Come holler at your boy. Myself, Judge Joe Brown, Auntie Deb. That's Waka Flocka Flames, mama. She gonna be up in the building, Judge Joe Brown. We all gonna be up in there chilling, having a good time. And some people, uh, I think that I allegedly I snapped, they wish it was them. But uh, some people, you know, some people can't get out of the way of themselves. Uh, some people wanna be right so bad uh, that they're gonna end up right where they're at alone, miserable, uh, winning nothing but an argument, but, you know, sitting there alone and angry, you know, wishing someone want to hear that bullshit, but <laughs> and now we plan follow the leader. I told you I was going to kick your drawers in your ass with, uh, it, I was going <laughs> to kick your drawers. Anybody who don't do the work, I told you. We're going to kick your drawers in the ass with the work. I said that already. I've, I've been said that. Uh, but I guess you guys think now is you're just going to watch everything I do and your channels are now Kwame Brown reactionary channels. So either way it go, bus life. Is kicking ass. Subscribe to his <laughs> channel, y'all. It's called you Bus Life. About Bus nothing. Life. And all this other shit. When you watching me every day, when you doing whole shows about me every day, do you really believe the numbers are down? Is that what you really believe? <laughs> I got some more shit you gonna be watching, cause uh, I'm a con I'm trying to convince my boy AI to uh, to go ahead and start a YouTube channel. I'm going to talk to one of his guys. He got to start a YouTube channel. And they, they say he like to play horse every day. You're going to see the bus, bus, chuck ass, and horse. Because y'all don't know. Once you pass this ball, I'm going to shoot that motherfucker. I kept telling Chuck, pass me the goddamn ball. He said, fuck that. I make every shot. <laughs> so, yeah. He like to play horse. I want him to get a YouTube page. I'll come down there to North Carolina. I don't give a damn way yet. We can make this thing pop it. And I know you, you guys would love to be able to see everyday interactions with Chuck and uh, just see just see how he is, you know. You know, a lot of, I keep telling them, nigga, don't act like a celebrity because you don't act like a celebrity. Just like regular shit that you do, let people see it. Just record it. People would love to see uh, some of your day-to-day. -day. I told them, you'd be a bad motherfucker, shit. So, but... Fuck the haters. Let's get into let's get into this. Stephen A. Stephen A. Stephen A. Stephen A. What is going on, man? You already 
making twelve million dollars, my brother. What is it about these black athletes that you just you know what I think it is, Stephen A. See, a lot of people don't understand that the quarterback position is one of the most covenant positions uh, in all of sports. That's like the pitcher. And most times, uh, pitchers have changed a little bit, but definitely football, race plays a part uh, since Little League. I noticed since Little League when I played football, the only players that would ever get an opportunity to even play quarterback is the white coach's son or the highest paying boosters. The, uh, the people who were paying the most money usually had a son uh, that was, they were grooming to be a quarterback because that's a prideful thing in the white community. Uh, the quarterback is known as a leader. And unfortunately there's some white men some white men, and this is not overall people, but there are some people in the world that think that covenant position is only designed for a white player, a white male. They think white males are the smartest, the most dominant. I heard uh, Keyshawn Johnson talking about it. He says, oh, well, yeah, Lamar Jackson is not the prototypical quarterback. He's not 6'5". He's not tall, long arm, big hand, but he forgot to say one thing. He's not white. Because for the longest, the prototypical quarterback was a big, tall, white man around 6'4", 6'5", that could throw the ball. But back in the day, the quarterback was one of the most rugged, rough, can run the ball people just like anybody else. But for whatever reason... They have to keep moving this goalpost at the quarterback position because I think they see... It's funny. I don't mean to cut Mr. Brown, Kwame Brown off, but it's funny that he say it because down in New Orleans, they love them some some Tyson Hill. I mean, they love some Tyson Hill. They feel like he... They gave him a big contract and... He ain't never started a football game. The man's almost 30 years old. But that's another story. That's another story. Let's get back to what Kwame Brown's saying. A scary thing happening. Quarterbacks that are mobile are way more dynamic. Uh, you can look at the, uh, the fella Henry, the big white quarterback Henry. I think he's for the Bills. Uh, he's a good quarterback. He's tall. He's mobile. He can pass. He's dangerous because his mobility along with his passing. But not a lot of 6'5 white guys can do that. They might have good arms, but they can't move, especially not like a Lamar Jackson. We got we churn out 6'5 guys that can move. <laughs> how many quarterbacks that how, see this is what I saw a lot in Little League. In Little League, they would take a black quarterback and turn him into a wide receiver. Most of the players that I knew that was around 6'5", 6'6", they turned them into quarterback. I mean, wide receivers. Now, they would go out there, be throwing the ball, they'd be running, and they would say, oh, no, 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 let him just run. I'm like, wait a minute, he's the most electrifying player on the field. We need the ball in his hand. But they would rather a white guy throw it to him and let him use his legs and his athletic ability, shake and bake, and go get that dang 200 yards Because those stats, most of them go to the quarterback. The legacy goes to that white male quarterback. So with Stephen A., I think they place that call to Stephen A. One of them got them, one of them white boys called Stephen A. They say, Stephen A. answered the phone. Hello? He said, hello? Stephen A., what the hell is going on? Didn't I tell you before the season? to make sure you let them know Lamar Jackson is not really a quarterback. He's a running back slash. <laughs> Why is everybody not buying into the shit that you've been saying? They didn't buy into it. What is going on? Kwame Brown's a fool, man. Hey, Lamar, shut your mouth, nigga. <laughs> shut your mouth, nigga, while I'm talking. I'm not done. I gave you $12 million. You don't get to talk to me. 
he been he been he been he been, he been conversing with Judge Joe Brown. He been he been talking to Judge Joe Brown, man. <laughs> and salute to Judge Joe Brown. I spoke to him one time. cut them off again if you look at the baltimore ravens games they are intentionally holding that kid lamar jackson back because u of l's offense was more dynamic bobby Petrino ran a pro type offense with the spread but if, if you notice john harbaugh is running the shit out of that spread with lamar so how can you how can you ever get in a passing rhythm if your first decision is to read the, the defensive end and you doing a pistol replay? You can't never you can't you ain't never getting getting settled in your offense. You can't you know most quarterbacks are doing a three step drop back, 
uh, uh, what is it, a four or five step? I ain't never played quarterback, but you get in a rhythm where the three when you hike the ball, you're doing a three step drop back and you, you quick releasing. Uh, you're doing a four or five step drop back. But Lamar's first read is the draw read. That's a, I mean, that's a run play every time. So how can you ever get in rhythm if you're always doing the read draw, the read spread out of the pistol? So it's, I believe it's systemic because you can't tell me that Lamar Jackson can't play in Kansas City's offense, our Arizona's, you know, they already got a script of who they want to win the Super Bowls. They don't want Lamar taking no championships from Mahomes, uh, uh, these new quarterbacks that's coming into the league. You know, you even got the uh, the Browns quarterback. I forgot his name, but you they know who they want to win, and they know who want to lose. Who they want to lose. That's all I'm saying, man. Just look deeply into it. Systemic racism is just not in society. It's in sports, too. Percent passing. He was an MVP already. Stephen A. moved the goal post. It's all about how you win it in the playoffs. But then you can watch him talk about Matthew Stafford as being a great talent. And it's not even Matthew Stafford's fault. It's the Detroit Lions' fault, and they're if trying Matthew to get Stafford lose. They're trying to get that boy Lamar Jackson hurt, so it'll fit John Harbaugh's narrative. Because if Lamar Jackson get hurt, that'll justify Harbaugh's coaching, and he'll mess around and get another con. Where Lamar's hurt, so we have you know we're going through all of this diversity. And they'll mess around and give Harbor another contract just because Lamar got hurt. You know, I don't think Lamar, I don't think Harbo really believed in Jackson from the jump. And they really wanted to put him at receiver. A running back. You know what I'm saying? That's what that's what that's what they really wanted to do. But Lamar wasn't budging. He he wasn't budging. He said he's a quarterback and he can't catch. So it killed it right there. For the Rams. It won't be Matthew Stafford's fault. It will be the coach's fault. That's what he said. Sitting across from Keyshawn Johnson, he said, if Matthew Stafford don't get it done for the Rams, because we know his talent, we know his ability, a man that has not won one fucking playoff game. But he has talent. He has ability. But Lamar Jackson can throw for three, 400 yards, run for another 120, and he got to win in the postseason. He, his arm just don't, it just go like this. And I would rather see it go like this because all of the greatest white quarterbacks, they threw it over the shoulder and it went like that. I don't give a damn that he could throw a sidearm longer than they could throw it like that. I just like the way like that look. Because like this, don't look like that. And Lamar Jackson actually threw better in college. That's all I'm saying. Look at the tape. How is Matthew Stafford considered a good quarterback? If you listen to the words of Stephen A., you get judged based on your postseason. But with Matthew Stafford, we got a butt. How in the hell does the, even the brother Harbaugh at Michigan still got a job? They cornering, they cornering the wealth. It's two brothers that's been coaching for 13 years plus in NFL and college. Man, them, they probably making 20 million apiece do both of their tenures at, at the pro and college level. And both of them suck at coaching. Both of them. And they ain't on the and, and anytime any team come under scrutiny, scrutiny. It's always on the players. They never bring the Harbaugh's name up. Well, it's, 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 the, it's the offensive coordinator. It's this and this and that. Well, why ain't it never the coach's fault? Just look at the narrative. We got a butt. Check it out, y'all. I ain't lying to y'all. But it's the organization. Tell the truth. It's the coach already. Before they even lose, it's the coach. You're not going to attack this white male quarterback. 
What's that little lazy uh, looking son of a bitch? Not lazy, but the quarterback for the Chicago Bears. Uh, he was, the last team he played for was the Chicago Bears. That motherfucker white guy, he looked like he didn't even give a fuck about throwing the ball no more, never. Looked like he didn't give a fuck about nothing no more. Cut, what was his name, Cutler? And look how long he kept his job. What was his goddamn name, Cutler? Jake Cutler. That motherfucker looked like he just wanted a cold beer and to put his knee or uh, foot in the ice bucket. But every time he throw 27 picks and don't even give a fuck, don't even show no emotion, just walk off like that, fuck you. He was still the greatest mind. He's one of the greatest minded quarterbacks ever. Well, this interception ratio don't say he's the greatest shit. This motherfucker can't think. He's throwing it right to the other team. But still, he's the greatest mind. And he came from the greatest college. And he's the greatest pedigree. Because, you know, us black folk, we from dog food pedigree, I guess. I don't know. We done propped up these lady men ass behaving dudes. We propped up these lady men. We propped up these guys that just say we the weakest, most outlandish dumb shit ever. We propped up these fake ass, double talking, fake smart motherfuckers and got rid of logical thinking men. And got rid of men that understood like, okay, but what if I punch in your face? <laughs> nah, I just play. But we all know there's an unwritten rule that you don't cross certain lines with men. Real men, you don't cross certain lines because that hint of danger is what keep you in line. That hint of danger, I'm not going to talk to a man a certain way because it could be my day. Now, if it get out of hand, then I don't give a fuck about that. So, <laughs> nigga, it could be your day too. But before it get to that point, I understand that we should be having a conversation first. But Stephen A., he wasn't trained that. He was raised up in a house full of women. Uh, women don't normally get a consequence for talking to a man a certain way because we've been told you're bigger, we're stronger. We don't do that. But Stephen A. is a guy. In our world, in the guy's world, you don't just get to stand in front of a man and say the things that Stephen A. says and be disrespectful in that manner. And, and there's no level of consequence. But we've, we've pussified the world, I think. Now we have men that have real sugar tongue and they talk real effeminate to men. They do it over these computers. Uh, they do it in public and that's why they have so many shootings. But if you would just break down and think about it, is this shit really that serious? Nine times out of ten, if you take a, if you take a second thought, is this shit really that serious? You wouldn't do what you would do, cause it really ain't. But Stephen A., you, I think you have been so detrimental to the black community because uh, it used to be a level of respect for athletes because people understood that there was a difference between athletes and civilians but now we can have a guy that's in a barbershop leaning back in a chair barely touching the counter drinking a beer talking about yeah that nigga lebron lebron sorry son bitch i wouldn't give a fuck lebron sorry the motherfucker i wouldn't die man i'll bust lebron ass man shit i cross that motherfucker up. look what he did the last game and i just be i be in the barbershop listening to some of these niggas like Nigga, look at your ankles. Do you see your chin? Nigga, you a die just running too fast. <laughs> Put a little bit of level of respect on what you're saying. If you can't do it, yes, you can give a critique. But goddamn, dog. When the last time you seen your dick? <laughs> 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 He's like, Hi, buddy, you know what I'm saying? When the last time you seen your dick? How you gonna talk in a manner that's that disrespectful when you, if you're a man, you had the same opportunity to achieve that level. You didn't get to that level, but now you just get to sit back and talk from a hell of a nigga standpoint and not an opinion? 